I trust for inviting me uh, this evening and uh, to, to celebrate the publication of the work by Grove Farm. Um, I, I also want to uh, give credit to uh, my partner Gregory Kish and to our collaborators on many of the investigations I'm going to be uh, reporting on, uh, including uh, Arab Associates, uh, Greg Bright Farms, uh, and New York Suburbs. Uh, and this is uh, Kish and Catherine. This is where I work. Uh, and we are also farm. <laughs> uh, we have a very nice uh, uh, honey crop uh, this, uh, uh, this year. We all kind of taste out our equal happy hour. Uh, I'll talk about building integrated agriculture. Uh, I'd like to offer some ideas that might be uh, a little more intensive than what's on our roof and what's uh, depicted in the book. Uh, and I want to make the first point that most agriculture actually doesn't look like. Uh, the pictures in the book or the, or the pictures in your head. Most of it looks like this. Uh, American agriculture is not green acres. This is the, this is the Imperial Valley in, in California. Uh, the salt and sea was formed in 1905 when a speculative irrigation scheme went wrong. And now the Colorado River doesn't make it to the sea very often. Uh, much of this lettuce crop, this is lettuce, uh, is bound from New York City. Uh, and a lot of it is certified organic, and the water in it is coming from the Colorado River that is not going to the Gulf of California. Fossil-based, high-yield farming and food distribution is by far the biggest American contributor to climate change. Other impacts include tropical deforestation, habitat destruction, multiple monocultures, aquifer depletion, soil salinization, watersheds polluted with pesticides, herbicides, and fertilizers, and strangely hypo hypoxic or eutrophic uh, lakes and coastal zones all around the world. But about a third of the, of the Earth's land area is now clear for farming. And even state-of-the-art practices there may be completely unsustainable in terms of the planet's ultimate carrying capacity. And as the carrying capacity, it's this carrying capacity that urban agriculture should address. Because three quarters of humanity will be living in cities by 2050. Uh, this equation is, is something we have to aspire to. And the Imperial Valley, frankly, is within the urban environmental footprint. So why not move not just some farm to the city, but all of them, and return the Imperial Valley to, the nat to its natural condition a harmless desert. It's not possible, you say, but let's look at the scale of the problem. All the interior square footage we need in just one story uh, in, with uh, Western usage standards is about 15 trillion square feet, and that's a bit smaller than Greenland. Uh, we've got to do something with Greenland anyway, right? <laughs> Over the next couple of generations, we should be equal to this task. Uh, so I'm going to talk for a couple of minutes about the scale of the issue we see it because we can't start, and a couple of minutes about what the solution might look like. So here we are, New York City, 304 square miles, with low carbon emissions, but our factories, port facilities, our agriculture and resource extraction footprints are well outside the city. Uh, so here's, oops, didn't mean that be there. Here's, a, here's another. Uh, New York City footprint. The New York City water system is about 1,900 square miles, more than six times the city's area. And at one billion gallons per year, that's enough to, uh, if we plug up all our drains, to have the city at about 1.5 meters under water. All right, here's the photovoltaic area, and I, I turn New York City a hotter color. Uh, this is enough photovoltaics to power the, uh, the grid of the city. And this is the area required to farm about 100, uh, to farm all the uh, produce uh, that we need in the city. Uh, grain and wheat have far larger footprints, so I'll focus on produce. Uh, and as you can see, the feasibility of New York's feeding itself within its borders is, is a little borderline. It would take just about all of our roof area. Worst news <laughs> is that the energy required for conventional agriculture is enormous and we would need another reservoir. 
And we're only really replicating uh, all the problems in the Imperial Valley right here on the rooftops of New York City. So how about hydroponic farming? Well, better. We need just seven square miles. And the water and power required are in So there'll be a few rooftop farms, and I certainly hope community gardens are protected. I, and that a, an, an urban agriculture czar is, is appointed uh, per the recommendations. Uh, but I think hydroponics will take place in greenhouses. And it's a condition very similar uh, to the Garden of Eden within our buildings and cities. <laughs> Simultaneous energy production, daylight and water use, treatment, and food cultivation, perhaps. Here's an example. This is a sewage treatment facility with hydroponic plants growing in media uh, over in New Mexico as a living machine. Uh, but notice the plants are tropical, understory, not fruits and vegetables. It's going to take a city. You can't do everything at the scale of one interior. You can't grow produce at economical volumes if human beings are also occupying the space. The environmental conditions required for plant growth are not the same as for the comfort the comfort of homo sapiens, in terms of light, humidity, and temperature levels. And if photovoltaics are taking 90% of the light, as they are here, you don't have a production greenhouse. And uh, with all the due respect to Dick, uh, the re many renderings of high-rise solutions on his website, oops, uh, are visually arresting, but uh, they all display a lack of sunlight. And humans need daylight, and plants need sunlight. And it's that simple. These plants see the sun about once a year. Uh, and the photovoltaics here won't uh, make up the uh, uh, enough power for artificial illumination, at least uh, with today's efficiencies. Uh, the solution, I believe, and there's a bit of uh, lies in this direction. This is the science barge anchored for a number of years on, uh, on Hudson now in Carrollton, I think. Um, and no dirt. What little water is used is constantly recycled with its nutrients. There's very little evaporation or pollution. Uh, in fact, the science barge had no sewage connection. Most greenhouses need very little heat, uh, no cooling, no other energy than that required to pump it thin film of water under the wrong medium. That's uh, Tim Kempler there, uh, founder of New York Sunworks and Red Farms. Uh, and then within the greenhouse, these living towers are created uh, with various support systems. Here's a, uh, whoops, I'm sorry. Here's a uh, greenhouse, we, uh, a hydroponic greenhouse we recently completed on top of PS333 in Manhattan School for Children. And although the primary mission here is educational, uh, this institution can produce in quantity enough to feed uh, 80 students for a year. Each year uh, can be produced here with half the square footage utilized for the growth. Rooftops also have payback. Uh, and so do facades. For example, the east-facing facade will gross $119 per square meter per year at the current average price of produce in New York City, about four dollars a kilogram. So between 2007 and 2009, together with Arab Associates, uh, Sunworks, and Bright Farm Systems, Christian Cathcart researched vertically integrated greenhouse systems. VIGs, we believe, represent the urbanization of food growth. Facade insulation is more consistent than roof insulation. There's a roof. Here are the various uh, facades of various directions from south. Uh, and there is substantial energy available even for north facing wall systems. Here's a comparison of kilowatt hours of sunlight per square meter per year. Facades get about half of what horizontal roof surfaces get. So why not facade? Okay, double skin uh, envelopes where food can be harvested from a single workstation at the bottom or the top uh, of 
a six foot wide column of foliage. And several passive and active solar benefits can accrue and were researched by our associates. The concept trial was installed at the Sunworks Barge in 2008. I'm going to skip over it. Well, you can see there's Solar 2's uh, vertical greenhouse installation. And a proposal for a green market in Abu Dhabi for the Mazar project. Where only about 5% of the daylight reaches the market floor. We believe vertical farming is also feasible within the double envelope of high rise buildings. Taking advantage of the Venetian blind effect, why not have lettuce at your desk? <laughs> Strawberries for lunch. And turn our buildings literally green. 